If we're dealing with a highly skewed distribution, then again we should be using the median as the measure of center, IQR as the measure of spread. So those are the two values that we want to use um, when we look at identifying outliers. For skewed distributions, an outlier is going to be any value that's greater than Q3, the third quartile, plus 1.5 times the IQR, or any value less than the first quartile, minus 1.5 times the IQR. So again, not terribly complicated formulas, but we're going to introduce a calculator that we can use, so we just plug in two numbers and generate that result. In example eight, we want to go back to the data we considered in example three, so possession limits. We want to find the maximum and minimum likely values, and again, anything beyond that will be considered unlikely to occur or an outlier. So we'll launch the maximum minimum usual value calculator, which is on that module 3.2 page again. We're going to switch this to find values using the interquartile range. And again, up here it's showing us the formula that it's using to calculate both those minimum and maximum values. So now we're going to enter Q1 and Q3 into these two boxes. So the value we came up with for Q1 in that example was 2. And for Q3, we came up with 6. Click Submit, and this is going to generate that range of likely values. So in this case, from negative 4 to 12. So values between negative 4 and 12 or again, since they're really, in this case, just practically aren't going to be any negative values, we could say 0 to 12, are likely to occur. Anything above 12, so any states that allow a possession limit above 12 ounces, would be considered unusually high. These states, in this case, are outliers. Any states that allow more than 12 ounces would be considered to be outlier states, allowing unusually high limits of medical marijuana. So we have methods now for calculating outliers, whether we have symmetric or uh, moderately skewed distributions, or for dealing with highly skewed distributions. Uh, unfortunately, the conversation doesn't really end there. We won't go into this a lot in this class, but um, if we detect outliers in our data, there's a little bit more we have to think about. So for instance, the first thing to ask ourselves is, where did these values come from? So one case might be something as simple as a data collection error. So data gets manipulated, moved around, copied. Um, so sometimes there's a portion where people are handwriting results, entering data into a computer, copying and pasting things. It could be something as simple as somebody added an extra zero, left off a zero, so a typo could result in a data collection error. Um, at some point, someone could have reported the wrong value. Um, so simple errors that could lead to results. The other case is that that outlier could be a valid data point. So if we go back to the idea of considering people's annual salaries, and then we get Kobe Bryant, who's making millions of dollars a year, that's not a data collection error. That's a true value for at least one person in the United States, more because we have more professional athletes. So we have to consider whether our outlier is an error or a valid data point. And then that's going to lead us to think about questions of whether we should omit that data value from our analysis. So if we do have a data collection error, we know that's the case. We might want to omit that from our data. But if we have a valid data point and throw that out, throwing out valid data introduces a form of bias. Into our results, or basically means we're just straight up lying about what we found. If we start getting into the cases where we can pick and choose data we do and don't want to include, we're biasing our results, we're coming up with inaccurate conclusions. So throwing out valid data introduces bias and is a form of just blatantly lying about your results.